welcome back. Uh, this is Thanos. Guys, I've never been able to crouch behind a maquette before and completely disappear. That is just a little hint at the size and scale of this amazing Thanos on the throne maquette that we are showing you today. Now, this is not the only time we're going to be showing you him on our live show. He is coming back next week, so I'm not going to reveal too much about him right now. Just give you a nice turn around on him. Oh my God, this piece is amazing. Like I usually when I'm turning things, I don't have to put pressure on it to make it move. But this guy, I have to actually push him to turn. Otherwise he will not turn, he will not move. He is so amazing. We've been looking forward to show, like, to showing you him for such a long time. I'm so impressed with everybody who has worked on this piece. It is the idealized version of Thanos. He has his Infinity Gauntlet. He has everything about him. The sculpt is kind is more the comic version than the movie version. It's but it also has elements of both versions of Thanos. I'm just gonna keep spinning him so you guys can get a really good look at him. Oh my gosh, he's so good. Just like, look at him. Um, so the reason I don't wanna say much right now is because next week we will have um, Mr. Will Harbottle who helped sculpt him in studio answering Q, Q's and A's about what it was like to work on this amazing piece. So be sure to go to our Facebook event and write your questions in the live event for next week's because we will be pulling questions directly from the fans. So if you have a question about this Thanos piece, feel free to ask it in our Facebook event for next week's live show. That's the March 22nd live show. So nope, today is March 22nd, the March 29th live show. I'm sorry, I just keep staring at this perfect, perfect piece of sideshow artistry. I am so impressed with everyone involved. I like I can't even imagine all the work that was put into this. It is beautiful. So yes, Thanos will be in the house for two weeks in a row. Next week we'll have the sculptor live answering your questions. So be sure to go to the March 29th live show event, RSVP, and ask your questions for the sculptor. Anyway, um, I'm gonna stop staring at him for a second. And I'm sorry to have to take him away from you, but we do have one more break for you and then we will come back. But we're announcing winners when we come back. That's pretty cool, right? The winner of the Ash Six Scale figure from last week. Uh, I will be announcing him when we come back. So you're watching Sideshow Live. Thank you, Mad Titan, for joining us. We bow to you, we worship you, and we will see you next week. You're watching Sideshow Live. We will be back. Come back. We have stuff. And we're back with the Mad Titan himself, Thanos, and of course, Will Harbottle, he's the guy who sculpted this thing. Hey, Will, how's it going? Good, very good. Good. Um, so, what's this doing here? Huh, weird. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, tell us a little bit about who you are as an artist and like what got you started and your journey to Sideshow. Um, I'm a sculptor. Uh, I started off making action figures, worked on uh, all the Street Fighter stuff back in the day, and uh, had a hand in most of the Marvel Universe, the three and three quarters figures and that kind of stuff. This is going back quite a ways. And then I got into statues and wound up here. I was kind of kept just yeah. going through the process, and then you wound Transitioned to a digital sculptor halfway through my career, and that was the turning point for me. Wow. It, yeah. That's awesome. Cool. So we have a little bit of Q&A, some from the fans, some from just inquiring minds want to know. Um, so the question that everybody is asking is how long did Thanos take to design? The design part started before I got involved, so I'm not quite sure exactly how long that was, but I know it was maybe a year or something of, you know, kicking around ideas mm -hmm. and letting it percolate. But when I got involved, the design was fairly well established, and from the time I sat down to start sculpting until the time we were done, and there was a lot of design that was going on while we were doing it, um, it was probably about four months. It was the longest piece that I've ever worked on by a long shot. Cool. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's <clears throat> like, and that's how long it took you to sculpt it? 
Yes. So it took about four months to sculpt. Yeah, and that was partly because, as I said, we were evolving it as we went. I mean, one thing that I kept trying to remind myself and the designers we were working with was, this guy is going to be huge. <laughs> and what you don't normally have to worry about, like, you know, you know, a shoe for a quarter scale figure is going to be about that big. So, I mean, yeah. it's not even... Uh, you can get away with some more empty areas and less detail and stuff like that. But I was like, this guy's shoe is going to be big enough for my daughter. And, <laughs> which, which it literally is. When, when, when this came in, I was like, oh, I want to cast up a pair in, in rubber and oh have her gosh, wear them. That would be so, so cool. bad. If you do awesome. that, I want a pair for my new <laughs> Um Anyway, so we had to keep um, it elaborating on mm -hmm. the design, bringing more out of it. And that, that was a process of a lot of experimentation and trial and error and that's what takes a long time that's amazing um so out of all the like evolution of the design and the little touches that you had to add what was your personal favorite that you added to him i thought that we it was really crucial for us that his silhouette was easily recognizable as thanos and one of his most iconic parts of his costume is his shoulder uh -huh. pad yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I thought that really evolved really cool. Um, yeah, that sure. we, It's very Thanos and yet it's, you know, got more detail in it. and Yeah, stuff. there's like engravings on it and everything. Yeah. Alien, writing. Of, <laughs> alien writing. Alien <laughs> writing. What, what species in the Marvel Universe do you know? Uh, I don't. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, he, I mean, he's a Titan, yes. so I guess it's a mm -hmm. Titanic. It's Titanic. <laughs> Marvel fans in the comments, let's let's confirm that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so Jay, so I have a couple of fan questions from uh, people in our Facebook group. Jay would like to know how were you able to pick and choose which parts of Thanos to give a modern makeover to, as opposed to like an older version of Thanos. Uh, as I said, we really wanted to stay as true to it as we could. Mm -hmm. Most of the changes we made weren't because, oh, we just willy-nilly want to change that. It was, again, because of how big it was. Um, I mean, classic Thanos has rain boots, yes. just like plain old rain boots. And we knew that had to evolve just because of the real estate. I mean, if it was just a big, smooth rain boot that was that big, it, you know, it would look <laughs> it very would look kind of strange like a on toy. a shelf. It would yeah. really look like a toy, yeah. and we knew we couldn't do that. So those were the areas that we concentrated on, boots, gloves, and uh, shoulder pad thing. Um, but we, I mean, the, that, that portrait in particular is literally traced over a Ron Lim drawing. I mean, it's wow. as close as we could possibly, possibly get to uh, a drawing that Ron Lim did. That's so. amazing. I love the way you, he's seated, but you also portrayed movement in him. And that's kind of like in the way his torso's twisted and his, he's has a powerful seated position. Like, how did you manage to capture movement while also being still? Like, that's, that's such a strange question, but. <laughs> that, that actually, we, we got, a, I got a lot of help from Martin Canali on that. Um, we originally kind of pictured him as just sort of uh, Conan, you know, kind of just, or, you know, somebody just sort of sitting back and mm -hmm. being powerful in that way. And we knew that that would make a statement, but a less interesting sculpture. And so Martine suggested that, you know, we get more of a twist and, uh, and it kind of all evolved into, we pictured, he's like, the, ba the mad dad, like yeah. he's fixing to come up out of that chair. And so we wanted <laughs> to get that foot, like he's got, you know, he's on yeah. his toe and he's pushing off and he's just about ready to come after you. And that's, that's... what we were trying to, to kind of capture. So it's I the mean, twist. He's getting ready to come up out of the chair. So. <laughs> I think you did it. That's really <clears throat> cool. I also like the way Thanos always has like a bit of that come and get me to him. Yeah. And he definitely with his like that i have the gauntlet you even try to fight me like yeah. it's like challenging also that also was a direct uh homage to the cover of infinity gauntlet 4 where he's on the cover and he i mean it's my favorite it's one of my favorite moments in all of comic history when he's on the cover floating in space and he's going and he's saying come and get me That's amazing. um so that, that i really wanted to capture that moment when we, when we couldn't go for that we knew we wanted him in the throne, mm -hmm. but I still wanted to reference that awesome moment. He's telling the entire Marvel Universe, 
bring it on. Come and get me. And I was just like, that's, you know, there's nothing that's more bad than that. So that's kind of, <clears throat> I, Michael also would like to know what made you guys decide to do him in this size as opposed to like a quarter scale or any any other size. And Well, it is a quarter scale. It's just, oh, it's just it, 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 if he's that if he's that <laughs> big. I mean, he's been depicted at different sizes and scales. Mm -hmm. But for me, this was always... Thanos yeah. size. Thanos. Big. <laughs> He's larger than life. He's yeah. bigger than anything that yeah. you could have. Um, yeah, and then Nicole wanted to know how many artists actually, like, at the end of the day, go into working on someone like Thanos. This was the most collaborative and the biggest project that I've been a part of. Um, and that was cool. It was also intimidating. Um, so uh, Justice Joseph and Aaron McNaught worked on the throne primarily, so they tackled most of that. I mean, we were involved in going back and forth and kind of guiding, but uh, I did most of the figure. JP and Zach Rowan did the designs, mm -hmm. but then there were also other people who yeah. contributed stuff to the, to the designs. Um, painter was Casey Love. So that's the, the core team, but lots of other wow. people had hands in it. I mean, the cast and mold guys just did a great job. Some of the videos show uh, the size of yeah. the molds that they were working with on some of these pieces because they were all so big. So uh, it was a challenge for me because most of the things I've been involved in have been 95% me, and this wasn't going to be. We knew from the beginning mm -hmm. it was too big. We needed, it, the time frame didn't allow for it. Um, so uh, it was kind of, my first experience feeling a little bit like a director, you know, uh, yeah. um, trying to keep every, all of us going in the same direction as much as we could. Um, and with Thanos, <clears throat> with, with all comic characters, I, 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 I kind of think of, and this goes back to an earlier question, mm -hmm. comics are a really cool art form because I see them as being almost like translucent. What you see on the page is, you know, this drawing that's like this big and, uh -huh. you know, you never see seam lines and wrinkles and all these things um, literally on the page. Yeah. But you see them in your mind. You know, know. you see through them, yeah. you know, their yeah. history and their depth and uh -huh. their detail is all this stuff. that You it's build out a whole world behind through this it. one yeah, this, panel. Through uh -huh. this like I stained totally glass window. You uh -huh. you got, yeah, you got a stained glass window. And so everything that we did for this guy was really filling in that stuff that, that our imagination supplied to the comic page. That's kind of what we were trying to think about it. So um, that we, you know, we felt like we were very true to it. You know, I might see different things deep in the comic page that you don't see, but yeah. we were hoping to kind of be part of what most of us see, that's at least amazing. close. Oh, um, I love that just thought <laughs> process. It's such a great way to tackle a character that's so iconic, like Thanos. When it's literally off the comic page, uh -huh. that's that can be neat. But again, at our size and scale and it's going to look more more and more like a toy if uh -huh. if if you literally go literally by the panel mm -hmm. on the on the comic page so anyway we that's cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's amazing and so the last question is what the internet wants to know is that will he include any light up features we designed him to do that and we're hope, hopeful but we we won't really know until he's further along in the production process, but we were very hopeful That's that he amazing. will. <laughs> there you go. Straight from straight from the mouth <laughs> um, of the sculptor. There you go. So thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. I have a couple of facts about Thanos. This the edition size for Thanos is going to be 750. The confirmed price is 1200. And again, thank you so much, Will, for joining us today. We should do this more often. It's really awesome to have artists <laughs> in the studio with us. So uh, we're going to transition to a video break. And when we come back, we'll be unboxing Catwoman. So thank you for watching Sideshow Live. We will be right back.